Step into the flickering realm of black and white, where shadows dance and eerie silence holds its grip. Have you ever found yourself transported back to that pivotal moment when you first crossed paths with the 1931 cinematic marvel, Dracula? The silver screen unveiled a world of gothic enchantment, as Bela Lugosi's haunting portrayal of the iconic Count awakened shivers that lingered long after the curtains fell. Remember the uncanny sensation, as if you were drawn into the enigmatic castle alongside Jonathan Harker, feeling the chill of the ancient stones beneath your fingertips. Or perhaps it was the magnetic allure of Mina, her transformation from innocence to the allure of darkness that fascinated your mind. Each scene, a brushstroke painting an indelible image of a bygone era storytelling mastery. As the sepia-toned scenes flickered, did you find yourself ensnared by Renfield's maniacal laughter, echoing through the ages? The echoes of that first encounter resonate like distant whispers of an ancient legend, a testament to the enduring power of classic cinema. And now, as we venture deeper into the crypt of trivia, let's peel back the curtain on some fascinating anecdotes about this cinematic masterpiece. Did you know that Lugosi initially declined the role, only to become synonymous with the Count himself? Or that the film's eerie atmosphere was crafted with limited technology and innovative set design? These hidden gems illuminate the artistry that transformed Dracula into an immortal classic. So, gather round as we journey through the captivating lore that swirls around this enigmatic production, like mist enveloping the Transylvanian mountains. Let the secrets of the silver screen unveil themselves, transporting you to a time when the line between reality and the supernatural was deliciously blurred. And now, my dear reader, let the revelation of intriguing trivia begin, each morsel a drop of scarlet knowledge to quench your thirst for cinematic history. Long Lost Scenes, unveiling the enigmatic 1931 Dracula in the annals of cinematic history. The 1931 production of Dracula stands as an iconic cornerstone of horror, immortalizing Bela Lugosi's captivating portrayal of the titular vampire. However, delve into the cryptic past of this classic, and you'll uncover an intriguing tale of what could have been. Originally conceived with grandeur in mind, Dracula was slated for a larger budget and a storyline that clung closer to Bram Stoker's original novel. The idea of an opulent retelling tantalized movie agors, but financial constraints led the film down a different path. Director Todd Browning expertly maneuvered within limitations, crafting a film that not only etched itself into the pantheon of horror, but also sparked decades of vampire fascination. Beyond the silver screen, whispers linger of a longer version of the film a cut that was curtailed prior to release. Sources indicate a runtime of around 84 minutes, significantly extended compared to the final iteration. This tantalizing prospect of unseen footage has fueled the imaginations of film enthusiasts and historians alike. Could these lost scenes have held the key to a different cinematic legacy? One can only wonder. In the realm of box office supremacy, the 1931 Dracula commanded attention. Emerging as the sixth highest grossing movie of the year in the United States, it proved its potency in captivating audiences and solidifying the horror genre's reign. The allure of Lugosi's haunting gaze and the aura of Transylvanian mystique proved irresistible, beckoning patrons to theaters across the nation. As we stand on the precipice of another Halloween season, the legacy of the 1931 Dracula endures. Its path from ambitious beginnings to celluloid fame, its elusive longer cut, and its steadfast box office prowess all weave into a tapestry of cinematic history that continues to captivate and mystify. In the ever-evolving landscape of film, some tales remain eternally alluring, none more so than the enigmatic story of Dracula. Forging fangs and bites, unveiling Dracula's peculiar absences in the annals of cinematic history, few characters have left an indelible mark quite like Dracula. Yet, delve into the cryptic world of the 1931 film Dracula, and you'll find some surprising omissions that diverge from the folkloric tapestry we've come to expect. For starters, Bela Lugosi's iconic portrayal of the Count lacks the quintessential fangs that have since become synonymous with the vampire lord. The legendary neck nibbling, too, remains shrouded in shadow, as the silver screen fails to capture the infamous vampire bite. Despite this, the dialogue cautiously whispers of bite marks during those eerie examinations of victims' throats. It's a cinematic intrigue that leaves us wondering, did the Count choose subtlety over spectacle? But Dracula is not just about the undead, 
It's also about star-crossed performances. The movie marked the meteoric rise of David Manners and Helen Chandler, uniting them on screen in a universal production that sent shockwaves through Hollywood. The pair, having previously graced the frames of films under different banners, found themselves cast together in the most famous and successful rendition of the vampire classic. Their chemistry, cultivated across studio boundaries, illuminated the silver screen in ways that endure as a hallmark of the film. And what of the cobweb-clad castle that serves as Dracula's eerie abode? Unraveling this mystery leads us to an unexpected revelation. The intricate spider webs adorning the set were not spun by arachnids, but rather crafted through a peculiar process involving rubber cement fired from a rotary gun. A touch of innovation, perhaps, to augment the chilling atmosphere that still manages to send shivers down the spine. As the credits rolled on the 1931 Dracula, audiences were treated to a tale not only of the undead, but also of unexpected exclusions and unforeseen unions. From the enigmatic absence of fangs and bites to the unanticipated pairing of manners and Chandler and the meticulous craftsmanship of spider webs, the film remains a cryptic enigma wrapped in the allure of the silver screen. Dracula, a haunting legacy in Hungary's cinemas upon its release in 1931, Universal's Dracula took the world by storm. But not every corner of the globe was enamored by Bela Lugosi's chilling portrayal of the iconic vampire. In Lugosi's homeland, Hungary, the film met with a reception as complex and tangled as a web spun by its titular character. Critics in Hungary deemed Dracula adaptations pass, casting a shadow over the film's prospects even before the first screening. They didn't hold back in their criticism, singling out Lugosi's performance as the weakest link in the production. To add salt to the wound, theater audiences would frequently disrupt the movie with mocking laughter, turning the screening into an unintended comedy show. It was as if the film's aura of fear had been shattered by derisive laughter. Yet, in an odd twist of fate, Lugosi's Dracula became deeply embedded in Hungarian popular culture. Despite the film's lukewarm reception, the image of Lugosi's haunting stare and commanding presence seeped into the collective consciousness. This lingering impression was paradoxically more enduring than the film itself, which faded into relative obscurity for several decades. The turning point came in 2004, when Dracula was resurrected in Hungary through a limited DVD release. This revival allowed a new generation to experience the film and appreciate its historic significance, even as they marveled at its unintended comedic legacy. The tale of Dracula in Hungary offers a cautionary note about cultural reception and the unpredictability of cinematic impact. It's a story of how a film that was initially ridiculed and dismissed managed to carve out a niche for itself, not as a horror masterpiece, but as a memorable part of the nation's film history. Looking back, it's clear that Dracula was more than just a film. It was an enigmatic presence that left a mark, whether through our amusement. And as audiences continue to revisit the movie, Lugosi's haunting visage lives on, reminding us that even in the realm of cinema, the lines between fear and laughter can blur in unexpected ways. Bella Lugosi's fluent English shatters myths surrounding 1,931 seconds Dracula contrary to persistent rumors. The enigmatic Bella Lugosi, famed for his iconic portrayal of Count Dracula in the 1931 eponymous film, had no trouble with the English language. Dispelling the myth that he wrestled with phonetically learning his lines, records reveal that Lugosi was, in fact, proficient in English during the movie's production. Lugosi, renowned for his haunting gaze and distinctive accent, showcased his linguistic prowess in bringing the legendary vampire to life. He had honed his English skills over years of stage performances and prior film roles. The notion of Lugosi's linguistic struggle had gripped the imagination, yet historical accounts confirm that his mastery of the language was impeccable, giving depth and gravitas to his portrayal of the Transylvanian Count. As the somber tale of Dracula unfolds, a curious detail emerges, a tapestry of fauna in Dracula's eerie castle, suggesting a connection to far-off lands. Amidst the shadows, opossums and armadillos wander, intriguing visitors with their unexpected presence. The most intriguing cameo, however, is that of the Jerusalem Cricket, a cryptic insect with roots in Southern California. 
This eclectic ensemble hints at a hidden narrative, a reflection, perhaps, of the film's Hollywood origins. Armadillos, cloaked in folklore as nocturnal gravediggers, were not accidental additions. Legend had spun tales of these creatures exhuming graves in search of sustenance. Such mythos found a curious home within Dracula's abode, a symbol of nature's darker mysteries intertwining with human superstitions. Beyond the castle's menagerie, the movie's spectral influence extended far beyond its frames. Acclaimed author Richard Matheson, famed for his science fiction masterpiece I Am Legend, traced his inspiration back to Lugos' chilling performance. He recounted how a solitary thought sparked an entire world in his mind. If one vampire is scary, what if the whole world is full of vampires? This epiphany birthed a timeless tale that would reshape the landscape of speculative fiction. The truths behind the making of the 1931 Dracula lay obscured for decades, but with each revelation, the film's allure deepens. From Lugosis linguistic dexterity to the menagerie within the castle's shadowy recesses, and the birth of literary sagas beyond the silver screen, the legacy of Dracula transcends its initial frights. A tale of eloquence, creatures, and inspiration, forever etched in the annals of cinematic history. As we close the chapter on this cinematic journey through the eerie landscapes of Dracula, let us not forget that within the shadows of its black and white frames lie not just a tale of horror, but a mirror to our own inner depths. The film, like a skilled hypnotist, transports us to an era long past, where the boundaries between reality and the supernatural blend into an unsettling harmony. As you reflect upon the enigmatic Count in his haunting castle, allow your thoughts to wander beyond the confines of the screen. Consider the echoes of fear and fascination that resonate within you, a testament to the enduring power of a story that has captivated generations. Whether you watched in the dim light of a classic movie house or on the glowing screen of your device, Dracula has woven its threads into the fabric of your own experiences. What moments left you breathless? What scenes still haunt your dreams? Did the immortal Bella Lugosis gaze pierce through the centuries, making your heart race with the unknown? Or perhaps it was the eerie atmosphere, a symphony of shadows and suspense, that etched itself into your memory. Now, I invite you to share your personal connection with this legendary tale. Your thoughts, your emotions, they add new layers to the narrative, connecting you to countless others who have been entranced by its allure. Let your voice join the chorus of those who have whispered about the undead in hushed tones. Thank you for taking the time to delve into the world of Dracula with me. Your curiosity and appreciation breathe life into these words, just as your reflections breathe life into the story. Until we unravel the mysteries of another cinematic masterpiece, keep the spirit of the Count alive in your thoughts and discussions. And remember, the tale continues with each new viewer who dares to venture into the shadows.